Hi, I'm Christopher Hine, and today we're going to talk about internal power. This is something I really don't like talking about very much anymore because um, I feel like there's kind of a nonsense factory that just kind of produces nonsense about this unendingly, and there is no escape from it. Um, that being said, I believe there is something that's being pointed out with internal power, and I think there are some legitimate teachers who say they teach internal power or internal things, and, and they're, they're legitimately describing some real stuff that's happening. However, there are demonstrations of these things that are so fantastical that a lot of times people equate internal power with magic power. There's also kind of confusion whether internal power is spiritual stuff or internal power is a body skill or internal power is an inherent skill or an energetic skill or all kinds of stuff around this. Um, I also want to separate saying internal power from um, internal Chinese martial arts. I believe there's a distinction between those two things. Internal Chinese martial arts is a, a valid section of martial arts to be studied. I've studied them with an expert in internal Chinese martial arts. Um, and then there's what's uh, the other extreme side of that is people who, who study uh, IPITIS, right? So internal power, internal strength, internal training. Um, and when you see uh, that kind of stuff, a lot of times those guys, it's not that they're, I think there are some more devious versions of that and I think there's some less devious versions of that but basically there are some things that they do that can seem very impressive I'm going to show you a series of these demonstrations um, and uh, when seen through the wrong lens can be misconstrued as something that they are not they are basically just ways to be efficient and efficient uses of the body they are available to anyone in fact you use them all the time you just don't know it anything that you do right and efficiently you probably use some internal power principles in doing it um, but then there's a, a lot of people who like to say, oh, only certain people who have the skill who got to sit for six years on a mountain and breathe through their belly and hit their heads with red bricks or whatever, whatever magic secret thing is, um, that's the only way you're going to get it. So um, I'm going to get Josh out here. We're going to go over a few things. I'm going to break this up into sections because there's several sections I think you need to understand. Um, this is a, a organization I made for myself when I was trying to debunk a lot of this stuff and I was kind of going through and saying like well that's just this this is just this and I realized that there are just some basic themes that are used over and over and over and they're kind of misconstrued as different things so today we're going to talk about levers and leverage and how that's used in internal strength internal power internal training and uh, I'm gonna get Josh over here we're gonna make a sil simple demonstration for you guys Josh So we're going to talk about the mysteries of internal power. Um, there's a few different things those uh, line out to, right? So one of the things is leverage. Another one is uh, muscle distraction. Another one is force angle. Um, another one is joining force. So those are the ways I kind of break it down to when you see these demonstrations that look really amazing, you're probably seeing one of those really simple principles. Those are real legitimate principles of physics or anything else that you can use. You use them in martial arts systems all the time. You probably use them in your regular life all the time. The, the muckety muck of it and, and the stuff that makes me mad is when people get into like, oh, that guy's vetted to be a real internal master, you know? And uh, I think a lot of this is just kind of nonsense. So uh, I'm gonna show you some stuff with leverage and some of it's kind of interesting and cool and you can kind of apply that to things you see and you can see how you get these demonstrations. Maybe at the end, if you guys are interested, I'll make a video of me doing some of these demonstrations um, or maybe I'll we'll get someone real small and, and cute to do it and, and be, be better. Okay, all right, so we're gonna talk about leverage. So leverage is just any time we're using a lever. So I got a big long lever so it would really magnify things uh, awesomely. And right here we have 20 pounds that I stuck a strap on. So I got a 20 pound weight there. Josh, just pick up the 20 pound weight, right? Okay, so not, not terribly hard for Josh. He's a full grown man, he can easily pick up 20 pounds. Okay, now, uh, can you go to the end of this lever here? Maybe I don't, don't want to get you off frame, but I'll set this up. Okay, now, I want you to get both hands on this lever. Now I'm gonna thread that strap through there. And now I want you to pick up that 20 pound weight. 
Okay, same 20 pounds, right? But now the stick's bending, Josh is working real hard, and the weight didn't budge any. And it, there's no faking, you can tell there's no faking because the stick's bending, right? So like, Josh, it's just a ton of weight, right? And that's because as this weight goes out on the lever arm, its weight relatively gets magnified. And that's not true, and we can get into physics about it, but it's not really important. But for his purposes, its weight gets magnified because he's got to move the weight so much further from that end that it's, it's just really hard and you can't get it to go anywhere. All right, now I could set, make this, his job a little easier. I'll put a fulcrum in here. Now he just pushes down on that weight. Oh, look, and it comes up easy again, right? Okay, now look, it only moved that much for how much he moved it over there, but it still came up and it was easy. Yeah, easy, oh, yeah, yeah. super easy. Okay, so that's one thing to understand is how long is the lever arm we're using to do the work. Now that's a simple demonstration you might see in class, physics, whatever, um, intro to science, whatever, right? But that can be done in lots of really tricky ways that becomes hard to see, right? So for example, let's just say Josh's job, okay, Josh's job is to move this weight and he's gonna move it sideways from the end of that stick, okay? And you gotta kinda lock it in there. He's pushing as hard as he can. I should probably move because you know, whack me. All right, so he's pushing, are you pushing hard? All right, so I can see the stick bending, he's pushing as hard as he can, and, and that weight won't move at all, right? Okay, now, I can line the weight up with it, and now push the weight and move the weight. Oh, amazingly easy, right? Why is it so easy? And that was just a little angle change. Now, why did that happen? Well, because the lever arm is almost nothing when he's in this configuration, right? There are no angles to it, so it's essentially a straight line, so it's just like if he's pushing with his hand. It's easy for him to push 20 pounds, but, if it's at 90 degrees to that, and he tries to push it, he can't, right? Suddenly it feels so heavy. So this is one of the tricks that's done. And I say tricks, and I mean, you can, you can take that for whatever it is, right? Like trick meaning it deceives people. Now that could be used for deceptive purposes, like, you know, like now give me $500 a month and I'll teach you these secret things. That's a one kind of deception. Another kind of deception is simply, here's something you don't understand, let me help you understand that, right? So if Josh were to hold my arm sideways like this, right? And I try to push Josh over and be real strong for me. I try to push him over like this. This is really hard for me to do because I have a lever arm. Now if I line that lever arm up straight like this, super easy for me to push Josh over all of a sudden. And that's because I did the exact same thing that I did with that stick, right? I aligned the lever in a way that there was no length to the lever arm, right? And, and when I was working with these ideas, I started calling this shortening lever length, right? And I don't like that because it's all just really a part of leverage is the truth. But if you're trying to push, if I'm trying to push Josh like this, it's hard to push because this lever length's this long. But if I can line that lever up here, now it just got really easy. So all I'm doing is I'm shortening the length of the lever. The lever's this long right now. When I get it here, essentially, because I'm pushing from my elbow because I'm using my body, it's essentially nothing, right? So I can, boom, I can do that. Another trick I can use with this, and there's lots of ways to do this, but if we're in CESA, Let's say Josh locks my arms down to the ground, right? So, oh, it's so hard, but I can use leverage on my leg to get my arms up, and then once he's straight, I can shove him away from me, right? So I can literally drive my arms down either side and come up. So even though he's pushing my arms down, I can get him up, right? And that's not, um, I know people have seen a demonstration. I'm not showing the demonstration. We will get around to in another one. We're gonna go to force angle for another one. Um, but, but you can see that I could use the leverage here to line this up, right, just like I did with the yoga block there. And then once the lever arm length is about zero, I can drive into them really, really easy. So leverage is something that is really deceptive to people. If you show most people that, I think they would be surprised that 20 pounds is so heavy on the end of an eight foot lever. And the same thing's true if you see demonstrations where you get a little guy and they're picked up in the air so easily and then all of a sudden they become so heavy and they fall back down to the ground. Well, all they're doing is lengthening the lever arm, and they can do that in lots of ways. You can do it forward, backward, sideways. So angles tend to deceive us when we're looking at things, especially if we're looking at them in videos or pictures because they're two-dimensional. And when you add that third dimension, you can't see that there's actually an angle going on that it's hard for you to, to pick out. So a lot of stuff with leverage that you really already understand, you know, anybody need to pick up something heavy, they would grab a lever and try and do that, or you're turning a bolt and you lengthen your wrench, you know that the bolt will be easier to turn. So stuff that you do all the time is part of this continuum of IPITIS stuff. It's just whether we talk about it like it's a big giant mystery or we talk about it like, oh, it's something you can get a handle on if you think about it more, right? And I'm, I'm a big fan of let's talk about it like it's a thing we can get a handle on because 
And I think it's too easy to deceive people already. The world's already full of so much uh, confusing things that when you come to a martial arts system, you should be making things simpler. So I hope that demonstration of leverage helped you. If there's some more stuff you'd like to see, because there's more stuff I could do with leverage, it's just I think this is kind of the gross ideas of it, like being able to see the angles of the lever and how it works and, um, and how you can shorten that lever length and how that makes a big difference and how you can add a fulcrum to give you more power. That is one of the most important things. And leverage, of course, is essential in all jujitsu and Aikido, any kind of grappling art, any kind of thing where we're holding and manipulating things. Even when we're using weapons, we're using the lever length of the weapon to, to uh, enact uh, power trade of sorts. So I'm Christopher Hine, this is Joshua Teehee, and behind that camera is Maya Solano McDaniel. We're going to be back in the next uh, video series. I'm going to talk about force angle. So we'll see you next time. <laughs>